Well, there you go. That's why I'm here. Anyway, let's get to the point and let me show you how it works. Hi everyone, welcome to pal to tech Today is a very special day. This channel has now reached 50,000 subscribers and has celebrated its two-year anniversary. This is truly one of those journeys where I'm experiencing a how did I get here moment, right? I didn't want this time around to do a huge deal about this particular milestone. What I would like to do first and foremost is to say thank you. I feel that this channel has a very special audience. I've looked at a lot of other YouTube channels and there is something incredibly special and awesome about this channel's audience. I see it when I read the comments. I hear it when I see some of your videos or I, I just experience it when I look at your photos. I really get a feel for it because I've gotten to know a number of you virtually throughout the past several years. If I had to say one thing that I love most of all, above all else, about this channel, that is connecting with all of you. No question about it. So without making too big a deal about the subscriber number, I'd like to do two things right now. The first is to go through some of the questions that you submitted. I have them right here. And the second is to tell you where I wanna take this channel next and where I think it's going to be headed. Let me tell you that I was blown away at the number of questions that I got. Sometimes I even got multiple questions from a single submission. There's no way that I could answer all of them in this video. So first off, thank Thank you all for submitting your questions. I know your time is valuable and the fact that you gave me the gift of your time by submitting these questions means a lot to me. So the way that I approached this was to consolidate similar questions into one topic and also any camera or technical orientated questions such as my workflow and so forth. I am going to make special future videos that address those questions so that you can get a real deep dive and detailed answers for them, which is more than I can do in the time Time that we have right now. Why did you start a YouTube channel? What was your motivation and goals? There is a very specific reason that I started this channel and I'm going to reveal that to you when I hit 100,000 subscribers. I'm sorry, but that's important to me and you'll see why when I reveal it. The camera that fell out of your hand in the intro, was it broken or did it survive? Well, actually it survived. It never actually fell onto the floor. Okay, so this is the new X-T3. <laughs> you think I would do that? <laughs> Are you nuts? I was using pillows. Okay, if you were to choose three lenses only for multi-use, like, you know, you can use all around, what Fujifilm X series lenses would they be? Multi-purpose use for all around use. Here's what I would use. Now, this also depends on what Fujifilm camera that I would have. If I have an X-T3, the first of the three would be the 18 to 55 kit lens, although I hate calling it a kit lens because it's such a great lens. And the reason for the X-T3 is because this lens already has image stabilization built into it. However, if I have an X-T4 camera, which has IBIS, then the 16 to 55 millimeter would be the first of this three that I would pick. My second one of the three, regardless of camera, is the 50 to 140 millimeter zoom lens. I love this lens. This was one of the first lenses that I reviewed. And I noticed that when I go in into Lightroom and I sort my photos by my favorites and I look at what lens I used, this is one of the ones that comes up all the time. The only problem is it's, it's kind of big. I can't glue it onto my camera. But if this lens were really light and didn't weigh much, I would glue this thing onto the camera and be done with it for the day. And the last lens of the three that I would take is the 16 millimeter Fujifilm Prime. This is a stellar lens. Love this lens. And what I love about it the most is that you can get really close up with this lens. It's great. It's not a macro lens, but it does an amazing job. Image quality is superb and between that and having the 50 to 140 and the 18 to 55 these three lenses overall 
are my three favorite for multi-use all around. What exactly do you use to film your videos? Lens and settings. I shoot all my videos on Fujifilm 99% of the time. All of the studio stuff is always done on Fujifilm. Some of the location stuff I will use Canon or I will use a smartphone occasionally, but everything in the studio more or less is Fujifilm. The camera that you're watching me on right now is the Fujifilm X-T3. I have the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens on this camera and I'm shooting at f3.2. My settings are ISO 200, 24 frames per second at 1 48th of a shutter speed. And I have the camera on face eye auto detect, which works great most of the time. Tell us about your workflow and show us your editing setup, please. First off, my workflow right now is very convoluted. It's sort of like if I was eating out at dinner, I would be going to one restaurant for the appetizer, one restaurant for the main course, and one restaurant for the dessert. It's nuts right now the way I'm working. And it's because I'm in a transitional phase right now, I'm moving all of my data and organization over to a NAS system using Synology. And I've got videos planned about that that are coming up. So to answer this question, I can't really do it here, but I am going to be making videos specifically taking a deep dive into workflow, photo organization, culling photos, data management, and all that good stuff. We will get to that. Have you ever taken a photograph that's fundamentally shifted or changed your perspective on something? Oh, I love that question. Yes, I love the way photos can capture the passage of time. That's my favorite thing of all about photography. Here is a photo I took in 1995. And I took this photo as I was standing up to it, looking up. I took a whole series of photos on the architecture of that building. And look at how you can see the light going up the side right there. I felt just such a connection to that place. And... Yeah, talk about perspective. Um, that's one of those photos that really hits me home. I have other photos as well, but this one right now really drove home for me and changed my perspective because I would never in a million years have imagined that they would be gone. And so, yeah, that changed my perspective for sure. Will you ever go to the GFX system? Yes, <laughs> I want to. I want to test it out. I want to try it. I think they're bringing that price lower and lower and becoming more and more affordable. I do think that that's going to be the future for a number of photographers, and I would love to get into that system. Unfortunately, I just don't have the funds for it. But Fuji, if you're watching this video, send me a test unit for a week or so. There is nothing I would rather test out than a GFX. What's your favorite earliest photo you've ever taken? Actually, that was just in a video. Check it out. This is one of the first photographs I ever took. This is, for those of you who live in Los Angeles, this is Sunset Boulevard at about three o'clock in the morning. I was in high school. I put a tripod right just kind of by the side of the road. So I opened up the shutter on the camera and then I ran like crazy all the way here, got in the car, turned on my headlights and zigzagged along, there were no other cars, zigzagged along Sunset Boulevard till I got here, got out of the car, then turned off the camera. But why I'm so proud of this shot, first of all, was one of my first ever photographs. Secondly, I processed the film and printed it in my own darkroom, which I had converted my bathroom. So I remember the smell of fixer. <laughs> yeah, for those of you that have developed pictures, you should know what I'm talking about. How would you change, if at all, the Fujifilm menu system? <laughs> right? Oh, there's a topic that's near and dear to me. Okay, there'd be two things that I would change. The first is that I would have it so that when you go into a menu setting and then you cancel out of it and you're back to the regular camera and then you go back into the menu, that the menu drops you back into the place that you just were. Right now it's kind of goofy. Sometimes in some menu settings it will put you back and other settings put you back to the default screen of my menu or perhaps the top icon here. I think there should be a setting that you could toggle that enables, you know, Fuji to remember last menu place you were at. At, so when you go back into it, you can pick up where you left off. I think that would be my first choice in what I think Fuji should do for their menu settings. 
The second thing, I would love to see it go touchscreen for the menu, but a better touchscreen. I don't think they're ready yet. I honestly, if you look at a touchscreen on a typical smartphone, it is so much more responsive and smooth than a touchscreen on a camera. So what needs to happen before that is camera manufacturers need to start looking at smartphones and going, that's the kind of quality touchscreen we need, and then implementing it in their cameras. And once they do that, making the camera settings menu all touchscreen. Screen. I think that would be great. I'd love to see that in the future. Have you used film cameras in the past? Oh yes, many. <laughs> Nikon, Yashica, uh, I, yeah. In fact, I still feel more comfortable in thinking about film than digital, even th to this day. Fujifilm camera and Fujifilm lens, only one and why? That's a tough one. If I could only have one Fujifilm camera and one Fujifilm lens, it would be the X-T4, right? with the 16 to 55 millimeter lens. This combination does almost everything I need it to do. However, this is a very heavy lens, okay? And the X-T4 ergonomics are not for everyone, including myself, but the battery life is just so great that I prefer it so much over the X-T3. However, a very close second, almost tied, is the X-T3 with the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. This combination is awesome. You can do so much with this with regard to video, stills, everything. This is amazing. What's been the biggest hurdle you've had to overcome in order to create this channel. Okay, the biggest hurdle that I've personally had to overcome with regard to this channel is to learn to give up trying to control things that are outside my control. And that would be subscriber count, how many views a video gets, how much I can promote it on social media, blah, 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 all that stuff. I used to be obsessed with that. There are so many factors out of my control that go into that. I finally decided one day that that is all out of my control. So what am I going to do? I'm going to focus on what I can control. And the only thing that I can control is to produce two videos a week. I am in complete control of that. I can create two videos a week. I can publish two videos a week. And then hopefully whatever happens on the, you know, the algorithm and the views and whatever, it will, will take care of itself. But I can't control that. I can only control what I create. Focus on what you can control and apply that to everything in life, not just YouTube, but everything. Photography, your family, your friends. Focus on you, what you can control, and you will find that everything else will level up and things will get better and it'll match up. Speaking about the channel, I think this is as good a time as ever to actually talk about the future of this channel and where I'd like to go next. Number one, the first thing I'm gonna keep doing is exactly what I'm doing right now, publishing two videos for you every single week. I may not always achieve that, but that's the goal and that's what I've actually been doing for the past several months. That being said, I do think it's time now to take this channel a little bit more seriously. I've published 162 videos on this channel. Now, it takes a lot of time and effort to produce those videos. And as you know, there's only so many hours in the day. <laughs> and if you just keep on borrowing and borrowing from your time bank, eventually you're gonna have to pay interest on that time. If you say yes to one thing, such as creating awesome YouTube content, that means you're saying no to something else, such as generating income, generating work, right? You know? So moving forward, I'm gonna start finding ways to increase the YouTube revenue stream so that I can keep producing this level of content in the frequency that I am. This could take the form of creating a Patreon page or offering sponsorships to select vendors or producing the occasional sponsored video if I need to. I think if done carefully and not, you know, in your face, but there to support the channel, that this could be a good change for the channel. Because what I really want to do is just run this channel full time. That's what I want to do all in, 100% focused, with a small staff to help me out and to have those resources to bring you the kind of videos that I want to create. Right now, I have other outside full-time commitments going on. Could you imagine how awesome this channel would be if I did nothing but create these videos full-time? I so want to do this. Number three, done is better than perfect. 
I believe in that advice so much. I even went out and registered doneoverperfect.com. Don't bother going there now. It just forwards to Palo Tech for now. And with this idea, I am going to be producing a new series of podcasts with other creators. The show will be called Done Over Perfect. And I'm getting a few creators lined up already for the first few episodes. And it's not going to be restricted to just photographers, but to creatives in other fields as well. So look for that in the coming months. Number four is live streams. I was supposed to do today's 50,000 subscriber celebration video as a live stream, but I had to pull out at the last minute because I had some personal health issues to deal with earlier this week. But I'm doing great now, and I cannot wait to move forward on the live streams as soon as possible. Just know, I know you want them, I want to make them, and they're definitely coming. It is so difficult for me right now to put into words how much you mean to me and how special this channel is. Some of you have been here since the very beginning. You know who you are. You know exactly who you are. I am just, I'm beyond touched by that. And I think about that all the time. And I just want you to know that it means the world to me. And it has been an honor, an honor making these videos for you. And I cannot wait to keep doing it. If I can have one wish for the future of this channel, and that is to keep growing with you, keep connecting with you, and let's see where we can take this. I'll see you in another video again real soon. Take care. The camera that fell out of your hand in the intro, was it broken or hey, did it survive? Hey, hey, hey. Congratulations! Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you gotta look right in the camera. Hey. All right, stand by. Here we go, rolling. Consider subscribing, but don't turn on notifications. People have too many notifications already, so don't click the little bell. Harrison is cleaning her phone. Welcome to Fast Friday.